you guys are going to think this is crazy. Once again, let me just get on my soapbox to talk about conspiracies. I do think Hillary Clinton probably drinks the children. I, I know that's but weird. You know, you're really, like, then you're kooky. Listen, what can I tell? listen. <laughs> Wings, you would have a thousand live viewers every time you stream, but I feel like you banned everybody. Even like the, you know, the people that you really like. And I, I, I mean, I swear. You want to be confrontational? Let's be confrontational. Financial Guys podcast. And he has a big channel. I, I can't even remember his name. Caleb Hammer. You know, I took a lot of his advice. I cut back a lot. Uh, I cut yeah, back that, on that, fast food a oh, lot. Is, you know, is, is, that the, is that the wisdom that he gave you, Boogie? If I don't eat fast food six times a day, I have more money. <laughs> he, he gave me a... <laughs> hey, twice a day. It was only twice a day, God. I'm an Iraq vet, and uh, I got to be honest with you. I was really pissed off at you because you said that you know your service was for nothing. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I guess they didn't do it for anything. They didn't do. I mean, yeah, they 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 quote unquote helped oh, our country. Oh. The Lol Cow Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Lol Cow Live. We got a very special cat guest with wings of redemption and Poogie, boogie two nine eight eight. Mr. Prime Time, Alex Stein, who you got, you came to us. I, I mean, came well. No, I'm, I'm I, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, Jordy uh, tweeted out, uh, Wings tweeted out, you know, looking for a guest. And I commented because, listen, I'm going to be honest. The Lol Cow podcast is the hottest podcast of 2024. And I'm not just saying that. I'm not here <laughs> to kiss. I'm not here to kiss. But I'm a diehard Boogie fan I mean, from when he shot at Frank oh. Castle, which I think that was rifle, the Kyle Rittenhouse vibes. <laughs> I love the Kyle Rittenhouse vibes. And Jordy, I mean, he's one of the most hated on guys in the internet, but he's unironically, Jordy, when I watch your streams, you make me laugh. When you sing the Kid Rock song, it makes me laugh. I'm just saying, so I'm a diehard fan. Of both Boogie and Jordy, and it's an honor to be here with you, Internet Legends. Well, it's good to have you, Alex. I'm really, really excited to get to know you a little better. I've heard you described as a right wing comedian. Do you feel that is correct? No, I mean, honestly, I'm, I would say I'm more like a libertarian because I like, like, I'm, I think Jordy and I would agree on, uh, we disagree on a lot, but I think we'd agree that we need socialized health care. I mean, our health care system is totally oh, crooked. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we got to, oh, nice. or at least affordable health care. I mean, it just doesn't make sense that people are taking Ubers instead of ambulances to the hospital. Well, I, I got to say, what this, is, like, that's that's about as far left as I go. Yeah, that's what I'm it's saying. All, but other than that, I mean, I, I like, like, I mean, listen, I, Trump's always been nice to me. I'm friends with Laura Trump, his daughter-in-law. You know, I, I kind of like Donald Trump, hey, but hey. I get why people don't like Donald Trump. He's not perfect. Uh, you know, he did some stuff to uh, the January Sixers. That I think he should have done more for the January Six people. And, and honestly, well, I mean, COVID... My mom died of COVID, guys. My mom got COVID. They I'm gave her a here, oh, yeah, and she died that. during it. And that that really kind of radicalized me and changed my life. And that happened, you know, originally under the, all the stuff that Trump put in. So, you know, I really am kind of F the system, not necessarily, you know, I think both right, sides I mean, are crooked. Yeah, I think the worst thing you can say about Donald Trump is that he's a politician. And, I, you know, it's yeah. the worst thing you can say about anybody. But that said, man, I'm really excited to have you on the show. I, the reason I mentioned that, though, is because I have noticed there is a trend of making fun of, you know, quote, end quote, right wing comedians for not being funny. Probably <laughs> the only one that I would ever really agree with is I was I grew up enjoying Jim Brewer quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Jim or met Jim, but I uh, have. Yeah, I've been on his podcast. He's a pimp on a blimp, high on steak and lots of shrimp. He goes by Primetime Stein on Instagram and Alex Stein 99 on YouTube. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Stein. I like your intro, Mike. Jimmy, what the heck, dude? You got me <laughs> crying. I'm in here. I'm getting all sad. I'm thinking about Gabrielle. I'm thinking about New York, the guy naming your daughter. Gosh, it's a primetime 99. This is a surreal moment. I'm finally with one of the you know biggest comedic legends of all time. And you got me almost in tears, Jimmy. What the heck? And I, I but like some of the times when they cherry pick his like worst bits now, they tend to be built of like right wing fallacy sometimes. And sometimes they're just like, not that's not the funniest stuff Jim's put out for sure. You know what no, I mean? No, but I mean, Go Boy, nobody's, I mean, I would say that like Jim probably doesn't love that Go Boy, but that's like, that was some of the most legendary Saturday Night Live ever. I mean, I, I don't know if you can recreate that, that magic. So like, I feel like if we're always going to compare Jim Brewer to like Half Baked, like one of the greatest movies ever. Is that's he ever a great gonna... flick, man. That's oh, yeah, so good, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the best yeah, yeah. movies of all time. I mean, how is he going to recreate that? So he can't. So I feel like... He's still funnier than this show, so, you know, I'm a Yeah, he's never really funnier than me. Too much, but... He's funnier yeah. than all of us. But, but okay, 
So, so I want to say this. I'm like shot out of a cannon. I'm so excited to be here, though. But I have to say the last few episodes you guys have had, like the legendary Ethan Ralph episode where he thought he got you guys, which I thought you guys kind of burned him. Jordy, you're kind of giving him the vocabulary, an English lesson. <laughs> oh, shit, he's a so dumb good. You just called me a stupid idiot, Ethan Ralph. So I got one question for you. What's a predicate? Uh, a predicate is you being a Oh. What's a predator? He doesn't know what a predicate is, but he knows what, 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 what it's like to be a predator. Why would? What is that even? That's your like you, comeback. You, you is what is a predicate? A predicate is. That's your comeback. Is what is a predicate? Okay, how about this? What's twelve times six? What is a predicate, and what is twelve what, times what, six? Twelve times six. That's your. That's really. That's really your. That's really your comeback. Well, I mean, twelve yeah, times six is obviously seventy-two, answer. but okay. You don't know what a predicate is. I do know what a predicate is, but I just don't feel like the need. I have to answer that. You answered 72, but you didn't feel the need to answer a predicate? Well, yeah, because, I mean, that's pretty easy if you don't, like, I mean. If you don't do a lot of drugs and uh, and hide out in uh, Mexico and drink yourself stupid, yeah. It's yeah, but, <laughs> but, 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 then, but, Jordy, this is what I don't understand is why wouldn't Keem give you the mod status? Like, I understand why you'd want to be modded. People are doing hate comments. I'm because he banned, he, banned, he banned people that are subscribing. He banned he everybody. Banned I, don't, I don't do that. No. I, you know, on, a bad day, on a bad day, Jordy, you know you would. You would ban oh, the wrong God, people. On a bad day. On a bad hey, day. Hey, before we Not get to this, I, I, got, I got a trunk question for Alex. Before we get yes, to this. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Are you, are you pre-ordering the uh, January 6s? Dude, I wish, dude. I can't afford them, dude. They're on eBay. They're twenty four hundred bucks. They sold out of size thirteen already. The J sixes are pimp, dude. I mean, they're not the, the they're not like the freaking dad shoes or the Joe Biden, you know, Velcro shoes. But did you see the Fox News uh, article? Well, it wasn't an article, but like the telecast yeah, where they talked about people. like. Yeah, they're going to appeal to the black vote because of the fucking gold sneakers. Even the sneaker thing. I was on social media last night. Very interesting. As you see, black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, th this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Well, As someone I say this who exclusively wears Crocs, I have to say, those are some ugly shoes okay first of all don't and you I ever say so that bad. those are the most beautiful shoes ever so created Jogi. they're the most oh, beautiful God. shoes ever created no uh, <laughs> uh on a serious note though i honestly think it'd be good if trump went to jail because it would help him with the african-american vote a little bit and then if he went to jail <laughs> <laughs> it would. They would empathize with him. No. And then if he went to jail and he joined like a white supremacy or Mexican gang, he could actually get some, you know what I'm saying? He can actually maybe end some get racial face tension tattoo. inside the jail. That's what I'm saying. You don't know. Trump can do a lot of good stuff. I, I mean, he's not always grabbing him by the P. He can, he's, there's some good stuff about Trump. Well, I mean, he's about to get four more years to show it, so we're, we're going to yeah, see. 100%. You know. Like, Biden's not winning again, but like, but that's because Biden was a president of inaction. I don't really co-sign on Biden being the worst president ever, but like he just did nothing. He was a wet, soggy sandwich of a president. And like he just led us into more war. You know, that could be logistics, that could have been the inevitability, whatever it is. But granted, I'm not saying Trump is the is the peanut butter and jelly sandwich for everybody's answer. I'm, what I'm saying is he didn't get us into a fucking war. Like he stayed we he go tried back his best. To can we go to back to the part night. where Alex was telling us what geniuses we were though? Yeah, I know. But Andy gave everybody twelve hundred really like bucks. That. <laughs> no, but but Boogie, I was saying this. We talked a little bit about this before. It's like everybody, the Boogie documentary was great. That was a great documentary. People, you know, was there some embellishments? I think if you're watching that and you think that was all real, like, come on. So I did kind of like your Andy Kaufman. -esque. I do. Yeah, well, I'm saying I like that. It's both. But, but 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 listen, Tommy, listen, the best thing, the be everybody needs to go watch this. And Bookie said it was kind of a hatchet job was when you went on the other guy, the financial guy's podcast. And he has a big channel. I, I can't even remember his name. But when Caleb you were that guy, that yeah. The thing I think I learned from the Internet more than anything, I was playing. Oh, I don't know. I heard it called. I'm just a small bean the other day. Do you know if you heard this right? Um, growing up for me, it was you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? I was being Jerry Smith from Rick and Morty, if you're familiar with that character. It's a character that was intentionally pathetic in the hopes that other people wouldn't harm them. What I've learned very quickly from that, uh, no, very quickly, but uh, I've learned harshly, is that when you make yourself out to be a victim, 
the people that like to victimize people will choose you to victimize. I'm curious, uh, do you find yourself throughout your life uh, playing justification games? Certainly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I, it just might be something worth escaping in the future is just instead of trying to justify like every last uh, last thing, a reason for everything happening, reason why I did this, reason why uh, I made this choice is because of this whole winded thing of a character I'm trying to do and all this stuff. Well, in instead therapy, of just justification. Well, well, in therapy, we learn why we do things, right? Um, I know why. I mm -hmm. During the Frank Castle situation, when a man was battering down my door calling me a, uh, the N word and an effing. GOT and and all the know why I opened that door. Yeah, right. I did it because I wanted to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. I did it because you shouldn't be on my property. Yeah, I did it because this is a transgression. To me. That was the yeah, best. Caleb Caleb I laughed Caleb for the Hammer. whole hour. The whole he, I hour. Mean, you know, so I, I said this. I said this on the podcast last time. If you're still to get mad at me now, obviously I think Caleb meant well. And at the end of the day, he helped me out financially and in some other ways too. But at the end of the day, you can also be a bit of an while you're doing it and i yes. think that is the shtick i think that is the job i think it was being kind of a dick. and then of course we both got home with the agreement that we were just gonna like rip each other up on on twitter with the plan of uh you know promoting the show by the way a lot of things on the internet are fake in case people don't know that you should remember that uh but uh you know at the end Not of the day it was, it was an experience dude caleb and i because of that i've watched a bunch of caleb's episodes now and he actually can be a really kind, really sweet, really wonderful person. And he, I think he means really well. But his, yeah. his bit is being... For, no, for real. Like, I've seen him give no, money to like, homeless like, people like, and well, shit. No, like, only, yeah. when it, only when it's convenient to Joe. Whenever he's jumping on you, he jumps in the bandwagon. Really nice guy. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't you know, know I knew... But like I knew he's going down there, that's what he was going to You know, I took a lot of his advice. I cut back a lot. Uh, yeah, I that, cut back on fast food a lot. You know, I mean, you know, he... Oh, I, is, that, is, that the, is that the wisdom yourself. that he gave Explain you? Boogie, yeah, Boogie. Yeah, I don't yeah. if, I don't eat enough, if I don't eat fast food six times a day, I have more money. He, he hey, gave me twice a... twice a day. It was only <laughs> twice a day, God. Boogie, Boogie, first of all, and you, Jordy, I'm sure, and I'm not trying to give you guys a lesson, but if you don't have the McDonald's app, if you don't have the participating app, whether it's Taco Bell oh. or Wendy's, which, listen, Jordy, I'm such a big fan of yours. I've left a negative Wendy's review on the Wendy's. Conway mm. Wendy's. I've left a negative review saying that's how big of a fan I am, <laughs> saying that they don't make my chili hot enough. But on a serious note, Wait, you can't eat fast. You, you can eat fa fast food for cheap if you have the app. Yeah, oh, I yeah. feel like there's... Always a discount. Oh, yeah. Dude, Arby's has dollar sliders right now. It's ridiculous. You can get up to five sliders <laughs> a day for a dollar a pop. And those buffalo ones are really good. I eat two. Desi eats two. Oh, oh my God. Those They're are so, so good. good. So Arby's and yeah, the curly flu. fries. So, so people make fun of you for eating fast food. I love fast food. That's what I hate, these liars. Like, oh, I'm too good for McDonald's. I'm too good. Yes, fast food can be but at the same time, when it's hot and fresh, it's literally genetically modified to taste good. The monosodium glutamate <laughs> or whatever is in it. Like, it's impossible. Unless your brain is not malfunctioning, it's impossible for it not to taste pleasurable to your taste buds, scientifically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's designed, it's designed to make your body go, mm, and then make your butt go, What we're about to talk about still. makes you realize you're, t you're on a podcast with two 400-pound men. But I'm getting to the point with fast food that it feels not economically viable. Like, right? Because, like, for example. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, there's without a, the apps. Without the apps. Yeah, without the apps. Like, like a, a double quarter pounder combo runs you like $12.50. And I'm like, yep. I'm like $2 away from being going to get a meal from Applebee's. Right? Like, like at yeah. what point is it, is it, do they, they step on their own toes? Like with their pricing, because like they're doubling down. It's not all inflation. Because like I used to run a restaurant, and it cost inflation. me fifteen cents inflation. for like a large inflation. drink. Jordy, I've always wanted to ask you about this. So you you had that restaurant that was at that gas station. Was that when you were making like millions of dollars, or that's when you were? Oh, I, I've never the made millions of dollars. I've never made. Remember, you're making a hunt, but I'm saying that was the year when you were doing really, really well, right? Because like yeah, I, was, yeah, I, I, gave it, I was I was clearing hundred k year, too. and like I went in as a half partner with my aunt. And, um, she took, she put it, she took half the cost in. I took half the cost in, uh, regardless, but, um, in Conway, it was, though, it was in lot. Conway. It was in Conway. Yeah. But, um, it's still, it's actually still open to this day. It's called Joanne's kitchen, but, um, making burgers and stuff. Like what did y'all make? Like burgers, just home simple cooking. stuff. I mean, I, home cooking, yeah, see, like a rice and gravy, I, fried chicken. See, Jordy, you don't get enough credit for that. All these trolls want to talk crap. You're out there at least trying to make a business. All these guys yeah. literally just making accounts and trying to, to dox people. I wanted my and stuff eggs like in that. different nests. I didn't want everything in YouTube. I wanted like 
like make my money go in different places. So if something failed, I'd have something else to fall back on. But regardless, everything else failed, and YouTube was the only thing I had to fall back on. Well, that's ridiculous. But, you got kicked off Twitch. That was BS. And we had one of his uh, one of his uh, uh, trolls on the last live episode. Oh yeah, you said Wings Zero Seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it just shows like number one, what complete and utter losers these people are like how incompetent and inept they actually are they had to fumble around to like achieve this like it was ridiculous they finally got it together but then on top of that um just how mentally deranged and like unwell they are it it's so weird it's just kind of depressing to see jordy why do you think you have trolls like that i always kind of wonder like what why why do you think that they go against you because like even their allegations listen you said like some whatever uh, st stupid jokes on pka and they just harp mm -hmm. on that and then they go on every lobby why do you think they garner so much like hate i mean i get hate too on the internet boogie obviously gets hate but why do you think i i feel like you and i'm not trying to make this say this make you feel bad because wings feeds you get, the trolls alex yeah, yeah, I know, but wings, you get it worse than anybody correct. wings tommy's correct about it. it it's because i always want to defend myself like, you might not know this, but I used to be a hardcore Republican. I used to be gun-toting. Gun oh, I didn't realize Republican. that. I didn't and like, realize um, that. That's funny. And, like, it, the one thing that I still... You didn't realize that? Have you looked at him? I've the watched one the thing documentary. I still have in me is I have that... I mean... I still have that, you know, never back down. Biden. I'm yeah. not going to be your big <laughs> kind of mentality. It's that kind of Republican mentality. Like, you want to be confrontational? Let's be confrontational. And it bites me in the ass so much because if somebody says something I'm like uh-uh uh-uh i ain't do that and i shouldn't i should mm -hmm. just ignore it and let it go out i mean i think woody's gamertag said this best he watched a haters video and he looked at the views and said it had 2500 views like oh thank god nobody's seen it <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I, I, trust me there's guys a logs that make videos about me and it makes me so happy when it only has like but sometimes those videos get 10 15 000, so it's kind of like oh damn. Oh, yeah, that's when the sean ranklin shit popped off and like PK was like a part of that where like they kind of like were filtering views into them because they would talk about them every stream for like yeah. a year. And it's like, and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And what ended up happening then is I got the sick ones. Like, I, and that's just being unlucky. I don't think that's anything I'm actually doing, but you get people that are deranged and like they get sick. Like kind of like Selena. Selena was like a singer. She had like her number one fan yeah, her, like her. shooting her and shit like that. Her. Like same concept. Yeah. Yeah, because they're unironically I mean, right, your I, fans. Wait, real quick, I have to say this too, Boogie. Everybody that hates on you that knows all about you, of course there's some people that don't really keep track of you, but the people that are watching every stream and clipping it, they're unironically yeah, your wild, biggest right? fan. I don't even watch my well, own stuff like that and clip it. Th that's what I was going to say, Alex. And, and keep in mind, and uh, this is right out of Keemstar's playbook, okay? He's really convinced me of this. But the people that are making those videos about you, 15k 20k 50k and they're tearing into you they're ripping you up and they're calling you this you're calling you that they are putting out free advertising in this world everyone is hated everyone is hated mr beast is hated right and so uh people are going to see those hate videos and yeah there's going to be people plenty of people who dogpile but they are keeping your brand alive they're keeping your name alive and they're putting you in a whole in front of a whole new audience and some of those people are going to find you cool funny interesting whatever and at, at the end of the day hate is now just as valuable as love on the internet. It's sick and sad, but it's true. No, it's not boogie, true. Boogie, boogie, you're the giving the healthy person that shoots you. Boogie, you boogie, know. you're giving you're giving the healthy answer, but you know it still sucks when they're making a video about you and it says boogie sucks or Alex Nine sucks. Like, no, that is the healthy answer. It's like, oh, well, he'll this be is, he'll be freaking yeah, out yeah. next time. You he'll know, be fighting with me because yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. it's like it's He's like it's like now. you know, Jordy. Alex, have you got like swatted yet? Well, yeah, I have. I've had people come to my house. Yeah, I wasn't live, but. But also, Jordy, the war, I mean, this is the thing. These people, when they do, I, I don't really blame you for getting mad at them because it it is annoying. And people are like, oh, why do you get mad at a person with a thousand viewers? Those are the people that are relentless and persistent. And that can almost annoy you more than just a big account saying one off thing about you than a small account constantly attacking you, if that makes sense. Yeah, it is. It's always interesting because Jordy does have people who've made it their at the very least their hobby, but in some points, just their lifetime, just dedicated to trolling him is one word for it, but just like being obsessed with him. That's the reality of it. Like who gives a shit what some morbidly obese man in Conway is doing? I don't understand <laughs> the point, but these, you know, like there's like some guy out there living in, in North Dakota or wherever Wings 007 is. And he's like, this is my entire personality oh, he, now. He, he, he's <laughs> in South Carolina. I, I, I live oh, two hours he? from him. Oh, wow. I never wanted Why? to tell that to him 
because like I don't want him to construe that as a threat. Well, he knows now, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows. He, I, he knows I know where he lives at. But Jordy, I just saw a clip. I think it was Gavin. Or I forget who was just on PKA, and they said that's a conspiracy. That some of the clip channels, and I would hope that this is true, that you're in cahoots with one or two of them and getting paid on the back end, which you should. Is there are there any I truth used, to that statement? I used to be. I used to be with like um. There was a. Liquid Richard. See, that's uh, kind of fair. Mo Mooney and Lummox used to all pay me. And then what happened is it started a civil war. There's actually two sections of trolls <laughs> in my trolling community. <laughs> there's the Conway Well Watchers and then there's the Kennel Kickers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and like they hate each other. And like, because like one wants to fool my, my real life, the other guys just want to yeah. make videos for the lulls. And they kind of go back and forth fighting each other. <laughs> War. <laughs> There's civil a little war. civil war on who has the, the right to troll me. So what they saw? Lummox paid me like three hundred dollars, and like we had an agreement written up, basically that um, he was using my using like my rights, and I wouldn't do anything to him, and he was allowed to use any of my video clips and stuff like that, and he paid me a flat rate of three hundred dollars every month. Because he was making like twenty one hundred dollars or something like that, so essentially. But that's a good him. deal. I, I pay somebody yeah. to make clips of me. You're getting, at least you're having a guy that's doing it for you. I mean, and getting paid that's pretty good deal. Like, right. it's yeah. like yeah. I don't, I don't, Ooh, I don't go, for, I don't go to that anymore. Because one, like I see it now is just advertisement, and two, like. Um, Lummox got tired of shelling out at 300 bucks, so he started, like, putting, like, blue screens and, like, flipping the image and, like, putting all mm -hmm. this other stuff in there and watermarks. So it, so trying to make it as transformative as possible. So Which I kind of understand. Isn't that crazy, though, how their whole ecosystem revolves around you, Jordy? That has to make you feel kind of good, too. It's like these people – it makes me – that's the one thing that makes me feel good is, that, like, these people, like, they have to – they have to leech off us because they don't have. He their tried own to shut down. He tried to shut down a Wings podcast. It was it was a podcast completely dedicated to Wings, and Wings tried to shut it down. <laughs> oh no, no, that's that real was, talk. What, a year that, 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 that's real talk. Real that talk. wasn't a podcast. That's that's just a restreaming service. And I didn't try to get it shut oh, down. Okay. I actually never tried to get that shut down. Um, no, you sure? No. Am I going to hear about it that I didn't press you hard enough on you, this? They're going to say I'm lying to you. But I oh, actually, but I've, showed, you? I've showed them proof multiple times. I'll show you proof. I, I've never put a strike on their shit or even attempted to strike it. I don't know. Like, I don't like real talk. I think they, this, this just takes viewers from me. But at the same time, it's like I understand it. And I, I even made fun of Wings with that real talk. So I got 4,600 people listening to me talk right now. And you're on my show. And you got 200 people listening oh, to me talk minute. on they your read, show. They read... They restream you as you're streaming and then they talk over it? Yeah. yeah. What it is is all I, the people all the time. kicked off. It's all the people I kicked off that can't type in my chat. They go to his chat and type and like do that, and he gets donations from them. Oh, well, that's literally just stream oh, sniping uh, uh, wings. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's tra it's transformative because he does talk and give his opinions on things. So like, it's not really like like copying my product. I, I don't know. I always feel comfortable when they do that. Like uh, when it's not real time. When it's real time, that's kind of rough. Yeah, because it's I mean, but it might it be siphons viewers it might from be, me. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is, and that's what it is. It's like the fade boogie. I mean, it's like the fade wings channel, you know, where all the haters can just have a chat room to go to. But that that is the one problem, though, and I, this is a real criticism, Jordy. This is the thing is sometimes and I ban people. I ban people all the time, so I don't want to be a hypocrite. But don't, don't you ever feel like when you over ban people, sometimes you ban somebody that is like a, a real fan with maybe like a series, you know, like valid he, criticism. He does you know? it every day. Yeah, yeah as I'm saying. See, Boogie, because day, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I keep saying Boogie, but Wings, sorry, I can't see you. I, I'm saying yeah. Wings, you would have a thousand live viewers every time you stream, but I feel like you banned everybody, even like the, you know, the people that you really like. <laughs> I, I, mean, I swear. <laughs> yeah, I, there, every now and then somebody gets caught in the crossfire and that sucks but like i give my mods impunity to ban who they feel like they need to ban and if i were to like you know start scolding people that basically spend hours of their time a week doing work for me for free i would feel like i wouldn't have anybody that has my back when people when she does hit the fan and people just come in and start spamming me like the word or like spelling the word out one letter at a time and like that well all that all that should be instant ban but i feel like with timeouts i mean at least for me i've had where all people use bots and i'm sure I, boogie's obviously had this you've had it where you have to I, rely I mean, on your mods i've had mods cry after a stream they're like we got attacked it was so crazy like people don't realize that kind of weird relationship how a mod is somebody you have to trust I, you know 
I had, uh, I, I'm very lucky to have a lot of mods who volunteer for me, especially with my sporadic streaming, and they never miss a stream. It's pretty amazing. But uh, I had a policy for years. I've been live streaming on Twitch for like 16 years or something. Um, and I had a policy for the longest time. We only time out. We only time out. 10 minute time out, and then we let them come back. Eventually, that policy had to change because there's some real dangerous, sick motherfuckers. Out yeah and, and, and like eventually but i do think i do think timing out is is probably the preferable way to go but some of these people boy they test it they test it you give them that inch they'll take the mile every time there's a guy that comes to my stream he has 38 accounts banned right now <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes it just goes his name one his name two his name three he doesn't even try to hide who he is it's just like how do you have he wants you to time know. in your day how Alex, what's his name? Just, just yeah, what's his yeah, name? I don't want to say his name. He's one of the hardcore trolls that tries to. Does it realize. start with a J? Does it start with a J? Nah, it starts with an N. Okay. Alex, I know, but I wish you, we could befriend you... our trolls. I mean this, Jordy. I wish you get all those guys that like just try to talk crap and like they take this out of context sentence you said and be like, oh my god, he's it would it, like I said, it'd be totally different if they would have like caught you as some kid or something. But the fact that they call me a because I wore a women's bathing suit at a, a school a city council meeting, I'm saying it's just bull. That's just what everybody says. So it's like, obviously actually, you're not. So my name is Alexandria Stein, and I'm here today to call out transphobia here in Plano. I'm currently being restricted from swimming in the city of Plano Swim League against the women, even though it's clear that I reassigned my gender last week. Like, for example, do I look like a man? Obviously I'm not. This is a woman. But they're not going to let me swim and compete against the ladies because of transphobia. So what I need you guys to do is I need you to wake up. We have champions like Leah Thomas. She's an NCAA champion, the best swimmer in college today. I can't get a scholarship unless I'm able to send a recruiting tape to these colleges. So they say, oh, oh, you have an unfair advantage, Alexandria. What, what looks like? Does this look like an unfair advantage to you all? Does this look like an unfair advantage? There's nothing unfair about this. I mean, look at me. I'm freaking, I'm the same as a girl. But yet, you guys are gonna let transphobia run rampant. Paige, I'm so worried. You're the city attorney. You really gotta stand up and do something because you know, that is gender bias. And I don't like gender bias. I'm on hormone therapy. So my estrogen levels are so high, they're through the roof. But you guys are gonna sit here and you're not gonna take me seriously. You're gonna laugh at me. I'm trying to compete. I actually tried to befriend Wings007 one time. And what he did is he stabbed me in the back instantly. like. Because I went oh, to him yeah. like, yeah. hey, I can do this on stream and you could spin it this way. Mm -hmm. And we both get views on both sides. And he didn't like that, that reality TV outlook of it, like me no, fabricating yeah. things on stream so he would get <laughs> yeah, more fake. clicks. Yeah, just <laughs> you fake. You know, like what our fans hate. <laughs> like, like I said, I mean, Boogie, I, like, <laughs> there's fake on the internet. Sometimes you're making, you're, what you, at the end of the day, you're making entertainment. But yeah, the but people like, who are entertaining don't want that. They yeah, want you. I, you also need to remember, by the way, that the people that, that watch, that believe this kind of shit, um, they don't believe there's a filter. No woman on the internet ever filtered themselves. No person on the internet's ever edited themselves to look better than they actually That's... are. Reality television is absolutely 100% real. By God, Honey Boo Boo's actually that person. I, you know, like it's they're deranged they're just not they're i'm delusional but that's that kind of delusion that i look at them and i'm like wow holy f that's a level of delusional that i need a bullet before i wake up that way every day you know yeah but here's the thing here's here's what they're really about they're not like yeah there's nothing that's on reality tv that's real what they don't want is you guys hiding behind hey it's andy kaufman that's that's what they that's what they yeah, don't well, want. well i'm that's why i dropped doing it you know i'm done doing mm -hmm. it. but I, yeah, I, but I mean, say, alex i got a, i got a question for you alex uh, have you gotten like a crazy, crazy, obviously you troll in person and do all this other cool shit. What's the craziest experience you've had so far? I well, I mean, McCain. well, I passed McCain. That got me in a lot of trouble because because uh, I work at the Blaze, this conservative media company, and like he tried to get me fired because Dan Crenshaw goes on some shows here. He knows some people in my network, so that was really scary, almost losing my job. But uh, when I called AOC a big booty Latina, and she literally, <laughs> she made sixteen Instagram stories like I was such racist. She, she said that a sweet juicy. Which I didn't. She totally mischaracterized what I said. AOC, my favorite big booty Latina. I love you, AOC. You're my favorite. She wants to kill babies, but she's still beautiful. You look very beautiful in that dress. You look very sexy. Look at that booty on AOC. That's my favorite big booty Latina. Watch your little selfie. I love it. My favorite AOC. Nice to meet you, AOC. Look how sexy she looks in that dress. Woo! I love it, AOC. Hot, hot, hot like a tamale. 
because it was all on video. And yeah. uh, and she just played the victim, and it made me out to be this hero. People were like, "Oh my god, he made AOC mad!" And it was and it was funny for for like for seventy two hours. I was a hero on the internet, you know, because only because AOC was constantly tweet. Like she went to her Instagram and was making like stories. Like, do you think this is? harassment how do you handle women or how would you handle this and then on top of that aoc went and said that the after after i called her a big booty latina it was when she was going in to make a vote then she came out and she was so mad at the capitol police that she went and proceeded to say that the capitol police let in rioters on january 6 that's what she said she's like i believe some of the capitol rioters were the same people that would have protected this guy calling me a big booty latina basically see this guy right there right there he when i was walking up um, he said, hey, look at that big ass, look at that big juicy booty, this Latina, like whatever, you know, all the bunch of racist, sexist stuff. She pointed out that it happened in front of a Capitol Police officer, who she says did nothing to help her. It's really hard and it's really sad. AOC tweeted that she wanted to deck the guy, but needed to catch a vote more than a case. Which was like huge because there's no liberal Democratic you know, anybody on the Democrat side that was saying that January 6th, possibly there were some, you know, maybe agent provocateurs, as you would say, you know, it wasn't just crazy, you know, quote unquote, domestic terrorists. So, yeah, that was like the monumental thing. But I got a lot of death threats, but like a death threats, you get that. I mean, people are going to say, oh, I'm going to find you like I get that all the time. But that's not as bad as like a guy constantly reaching out to your girlfriend or, you know, that's what's annoying or like reaching out to your sponsor like that is the crap that's the most annoying, you know, when it comes to... Can I ask you some questions about, or make it, and, and also make a sort of statement about iPatch McCain? Dan Crenshaw, yes. I'm, 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 I'm an Iraq vet, and mm -hmm. uh, I got to be honest with you, um, but, you know, Dan Crenshaw doesn't speak for me, and he certainly doesn't speak for every veteran. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not saying he was a badass, there's no doubt about it. He was a legit badass uh, that sacrificed a lot. But I was... Really, when I saw that, I was really pissed off at you because you said that, you know, your, your service was for nothing. This is, yeah, imagine me calling you out because you're a nihil, or you're a globalist. Oh, I got a job. I work for the place. I got, I make a lot of money. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do, Dan. Yeah, I make a lot of money. Yeah, oh, I'm a loser. This is the guy, this is the guy who tells veterans that their, that their service Yeah, this, yeah, because there's a weapons of mass destruction that didn't yeah, exist. So I'm anti-war. Yeah. Serve for him. Yeah, I'm anti-war because he's I don't believe. A, did you guys find any weapons of mass right destruction? As a matter of fact, yeah. we did. Oh, where was? Oh, what weapons of mass destruction? This you're, guy. You're actually going to go down this route, Alex. Yeah, because we don't you're have any weapons of looking, mass destruction. You're looking like a fool right Dude, now. I'm you're the telling fool. veterans, you're the one that's giving more money me, to Ukraine. Plenty we have of a homelessness. We have so many issues here in America. Who cares more about Ukraine? Yeah, it was. You guys' service was wasted. You're disgusting. For globalists and bankers. You are the yeah. modern day yeah. version. Oh, I'm the modern the day version. You worry more Vietnam about Ukraine veterans. than our border. You, you are the modern day version. He cares more about Ukraine than he does about America. Vietnam. So you're a globalist. You're Why don't you take care of America? America? You don't care. That's your problem, Dan. You don't care about America. You don't care about Texas. You're Look at our, do, do you think there's you an invasion? Be a comedian, is there an invasion you? on our border you used right to be a comedian, now? Is there an invasion on our border right well, now? Maybe you should go back I to that, I still am a comedian. Is there an invasion on our border? you're not very good at comedy. Will you admit anymore. that there's an invasion on our border? There's an invasion on our border. Oh, yeah, but you won't do and anything about it. But well, why do you give $80 billion like to Ukraine? Why do you give $80 billion to Ukraine? And, you know, whatever you, you, ever want, to, whatever you want to spin it, you know, it is it is about the people you serve with. If it's if it's if it's for if it's for political reasons are are wrong, and I don't think we would argue about that. I thought it was kind of f up. You said it was for nothing, but when you called him I Patch McCain, which I thought was funny, he turned to other veterans. He's like, do you, do you see what he just called me? Do you see what he called me? It was almost like he was trying to get other veterans to beat you up, which I thought was like cringe as. F you know, <laughs> so that's exactly what he had to do. And listen, I respect yeah, yeah. every single man. Did. But that was the funny part, Alex. They were like, yeah, it's, it's your own problem, guy. That's yeah. what I would have thought. Well, well, yeah, but, yeah. Let me make this statement, Tommy. I want to say that I respect sure. every single man, woman, even transgender that is in the uniform. <laughs> but at the same nice. time, there's a lot of transgender in our military now. A lot of them are leading. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's neither here nor there. That's a different statement. My, my, buddy, my buddies are telling me. So yeah, as I'm saying, stories. there's just a high yeah. transgender leadership in our military. That's neither here nor there. 
I respect them. Sure. But at the same time, I'm a conflict interventionist. When I look at the war in the Middle East and I see a million dead, you know, Muslims that died for weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist or heroin poppy fields, you know, that conveniently when fentanyl took over, we didn't care about that, uh, you know, heroin anymore, which is kind of Yeah, but weird. it doesn't mean the individuals, and I, I don't know if I didn't, like I said, I wouldn't disagree with you, but it doesn't mean he did it for well, nothing. Well, I, and, yeah, and, I mean, I guess they didn't do it for nothing. anything. They didn't do, I mean, yeah, they, 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 they quote unquote helped our country, but I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if that really helped the world. I, I'm going and well, killing it, people. It, I, I, drone I mean, striking like a wedding. A, that, is, that's for the politicians. That's for the politicians and the people to Yeah, but Tommy, it's, it's, it's um, always, you, know, yeah. you know, Barack Obama dropped a drone strike. Every, one, he had enough drone strikes, one, every 20 minutes mm. for eight years. I mean, mm. I, yeah. if, if you're driving the drone and you're in Nevada, which some of the places are, or you're in wherever – I mean, do you really think you dropped the bomb on the wedding and you just high five and be like, great job. We did. We just protected Texas because we killed a bunch of people in, in a cave in Afghanistan. Uh, well, I mean, I'd have to get you'd have to get more uh, detailed about I'm just, uh, the, I just I just I hate war. I wish we didn't have to fight. In oh, the fair war. enough. Fair yeah. enough. By the way, by the way, we're pulling the trade. Like, it does seem like I, I was a total. I'm God, I'm probably more liberal now on this particular topic because, you know, when I left, I'm a line 11 witness. I was ready to go. And uh, it does. It just. It's not ending. It's. It's like you know. We well, just, Tommy, I'm a anniversary. conspiracy theorist. So I'm with I, you. I think 9/11 was perpetrated by people within our own government. I think they had prior knowledge. Yo, you're really. Then you're fucking uh, kooky, man. What yeah, can I tell you? Yeah, listen, <laughs> that was listen. A, that was a sub of Bin Laden. Let me because you no, gave me like, listen. Like, well, we got to argue about it because 94. this is why. No, but let me let me just trump you guys all. This is this is just open. Right. This is what they said. So this is you guys don't have to believe me whether it's an inside job or not. But this is this is a factual statement. Uh uh uh. Condoleezza Rice and George Bush both said that they, and you guys are, probably remember hearing this, that they were warned by the FBI that there was a plan to fly planes into buildings. You guys remember hearing that? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they but said, I, but I, so well, no, but I, I just want to say I, this. I have an idea. No, 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 but just okay, listen. Okay, fair enough. In the, official no, no, story, no, no, no. the official statement is that both Condoleezza Rice and George Bush it was just a derelict of duties, didn't take the threat serious enough, correct? We, we've heard that official yes. story, right? Sure. Yeah. So I just believe that exact story. The FBI warned him and said, "Hey, you don't do anything about it." That's my. That's that's where I go. And, I, that's, and that's what, what I was about it, to say. Look, I wanted to give you full credit because that's what I've always believed. I've always believed they knew that it was going to happen. They had a really solid uh, intel, like intelligence, and they refused to act on it, or at least, at the very least, did so not so, enough so about it. Well, not I'm not going to defend either. I'm not going to defend either of those two warm walkers, but I do. Some, I do have a little more knowledge I'm not, on how intelligence works in general. Okay. Right, a lot of these, a lot of these things, and there's no like you're looking at it like, okay, we prioritize this number one. This could be a string of other uh, 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 on a pile of a string of other stuff, and you don't know. But Tommy, it was important strong, enough to it? tell it's guesswork. It's, 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 I'm sure Condoleezza Rice hey, do you think, 20 do you think different George, ones a day. I don't know. Do you think George Bush, do you think they I bug George Bush do that much stuff about national I think, security? I think in his security, I, I, I think in his security briefing, he gets absolutely bombarded with what particular attack or what particular thing, and then they make their best guess. And this is all ah. administrations, Democrats, are, on what the priority is. That's my personal experience. Okay, okay, Tommy, how That's about what this? They, they make okay, their, okay, uh, okay, I'll give you that. But what about this? Did mm. the government lie and tell us that they had weapons of mass destruction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you how it works, having, having a little experience with intelligence. So they, I know, but they— it's, it's, well, it's, it's throwing— against the wall and that's sticking a little so we'll follow that up and not this okay let's just say right. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer let's because say, like what what was bush doing of course. when 9 uh, 11 happened he was in a f elementary school reading a book that you proved it <laughs> you know like that seems like a setup like what would be good pr that, oh you're reading to kids set, no jordy did you know what he was reading the book look it up right now in the book in the words it's like my pet goat was the name of the book and he was saying the class before the attack jordy you guys gotta watch this i'm going crazy the kids are learning words and it's like steal kite hit plane Yes, I need to pull it up. I, I'm, I gotta pull it up. I gotta pull up the share oh, screen. Get out of here. No, yes, yes. I mean, I get, yes. I get, I get. Get ready to read all these words on this page without making a mistake. Look at the letter at the end and remember the sound it makes. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready to read this word the fast way. Get ready. King. Yes, kid. Sound it out. Get ready. King. Sound it out. Get ready. King. What word? Hit. Yes, hit. Boys and girls, sound this word out. Get ready. 
Seal. What word? Seal. Yes, seal. Read these words the fast way. Get ready. Play. Play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Let's read these words the fast way without making a mistake. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kick. Get ready. Seal. Yes, seal. Get ready. Play. Yes, playing. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Or if you go speak your reader up from under your seat, open your book up to lesson 60 on page 153. Mm -hmm. Get behind this conspiracy that this was. Yes, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Okay, uh, I'm gonna pull it up. Again, I gave them listen, a reason to get just, to the Middle East. I just want to make 100 percent clear. I'm just telling you how it works in the military, and it's not as clear cut as it is in the movies. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like, I am not. Uh, I, I'm not even against conspiracies, government conspiracies, but I know how intelligence Why works. Why looking and it's his book not, up? I want to talk about this uh, this AOC thing, and I'm going to hit him with this slander charge here. Because I'm looking at this dump truck and it is not very fat, and I'm disappointed. No, it kind of looks nice. Hold on, I'm about to pull this video up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at I have AFC it up. Like I, I had to look this up, dog. Like she does not got an ass. <laughs> you didn't know she had a nice. She's a good looking broad. She didn't got an ass. That's why she's in there. She has not got an oh. ass. She got, I don't know. Oh That's my gosh, I would consider her an ass, but you know, oh, you know, uh, I used to date black girls. Black girls got that real thump, son. Yeah, yeah, they do have the but get up. So, Jordy, I'm on your side. Something weird happened. I think they had prior knowledge. That, that, looks, like, just, just, yeah, that looks like like said, like save face promotional type thing, right? So, 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 so the then president of the United States was well aware that thousands of people were going to die, and he's like, F it, "This is good for me." That's what you're saying. That's what I personally That's what I personally I think Obama spied on uh, uh, spied on Trump, and I do not even come close to believing that. You don't that. think like, 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 like look at something and be yeah. like, you don't believe like war journals think, look at a battle and be like, what's the necessary casualties we have to take to get this like hill? Civilian, or, civilian, yeah. then they're animals, and I should then I served then then I'm a bad person. I served a bunch of Nazis. If that was true, no, I'm talking about just if that if that is true, Alex was right. To say that to Dan Crenshaw, if if what you just said was true, then it was right because that means I was helping those animals out. Well, speaking about this, we got to talk about the guy who set himself on fire. Did I see? I put it in the chat. Did you guys see that? <laughs> oh, yeah, what that the guy, hell? What? That guy? You didn't see it, Boogie? Uh, yeah, guy. His, his name's Aaron Bushnell. Aaron Bushnell, and it's like he he like goes in front of like the um the uh D Israeli the embassy. Israeli embassy in Washington D.C. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Like, he like he has like this thermos full of like gasoline. He like pours it on himself, and he's like struggling to get the match lit. And it takes him probably I don't know thirty seconds to get a wet match lit. And he because like, he was the Air Force, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he didn't think Air about Force. like oh, I think the what? stupidest oh, yeah. part of this video is there's this <laughs> cop that comes in from the right side telling him to get down on the ground while this. Hey, with a gun. Is burning to death with no, a gun. He's got a gun. <laughs> 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 he, 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 he's like, he's like, I'm, I'm kind of almost on the guy's side. He didn't know if he had a bomb or something because I saw that the video was weird. A guy's burning to death and he has a gun that's out. That's true. No, no, that's, that's a good point. You're no, like, that's, he oh could my. have a bomb. I mean, I'd almost oh, have a gun out a too. It'd be like, why is this guy on fire? Because why would you light yourself on fire? He was doing his protest, but you, that's just, it's a. It's if he had a bomb, why was he constantly getting closer and closer? Yeah, you're right. I mean, but still, you just—I don't know what he's doing. The guy's on fire. He's, I mean, I would want to be. He was watching too him. many Vietnam movies. That's what the Tibetan monk, monk, monk blah, the Tibetan monks used to do in Vietnam. They did right, yeah. Yeah. self whatever they were. No, I've I heard of it, but I mean, do you yeah. think he helped the cause? I mean, yeah, he was. Yes. Yes. No, no, yes. No. Yes. He got one more idiot off the planet. The cause mm -hmm. is now in the right direction. Like, what's going to happen Jesus is you go have Christ. CNN talk to his parents or like anybody relatives that he has, and it's gonna it's gonna be hot for about a week, and then it's gonna be forgotten about, and he just wasted his. Yeah, life. Of, course. Yeah, of course. It should be. Of course. It should be. For Christ's sakes, I mean, think about this. Think about this. The Air Force, all right? And I'm not knocking everybody. Well, I'm not knocking anybody in the Air Force no, more than I normally would, all right? But think about this. If he was deployed, he would be doing all the same things that the Israelis are doing, yet he lights himself on fire to protest them. Get the f*** out of here. The Israeli if, army I would, does It would have made more over. sense if he wasn't in the military. It would have made much more sense if he wasn't in the military. I've seen a yeah. video on, well, like, but, I'm a total piece of s*** where, like, they broke into this, like, Palestinian guy's store. And then, like they, they like stroke. They they put him out on the floor, and it was like an eighty-five-year-old man. And then they took turns just walking on his back, back and forth. And like, 
like that shouldn't be tolerated. That that should have court martials. There should be some like checks sure, and balances I would agree with that. that. All but there that, is in the, the American the, military. Anyway, yeah, I, but the Israel-Palestine conflict is so terrible. It's I mean it's it's just so disgusting. We can't even talk about it. So I want to pivot. This, is it even? Though. But is it worse, Alex? Is it worse than in what we did in Baghdad? Is it worse than what we did in? I mean, it's probably going to be because I don't think Israel is going to stop until until Gaza's leveled. I mean, I'll be honest with you. But they could level it tomorrow. They could carpet bomb it tomorrow. That's the thing I don't buy about that. They could carpet bomb it like 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 literally go. Maybe maybe they would worry about maybe they would worry about an international they, they, Do they need more like something? political clout where they can get maybe. away with that? I maybe. Mean, <laughs> okay, maybe. Right. I, I said I something. Don't know. I got I mean, thrown on a total piece of shit because I said that as soon as Israel got bombed by Palestine, they didn't actually care. They actually probably smiled and gave each other high fives because now they gave them a reason to f*** them up. A lot of people I mean, said I, that. Here, I don't want to say that because I'll get in right. trouble. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, will, say that. <laughs> I will go as far as to say that uh, two things. Number yeah, one. Yeah, but why not? Why, why not say that, Alex? You, you're, you're okay with George Bush killing 3,000 people to well, get I think I have a little more evidence about that. I think, well, because George think? Bush. I mean, no, I don't think Alex is okay with it. I don't think he's okay with it. He didn't kill 3,000 people. He didn't kill 3,000 people. It's just he had prior knowledge of, that Osama bin Laden wanted to fly planes in buildings. He didn't do enough to stop it. So, I mean, you know, he just messed up. If, well, if I, I, would, right I would agree with you. He probably didn't do enough, but that's probably... Yeah, that, that probably yeah, is but regardless, I'm just saying... Shoot somebody. Shoot somebody. Well, guys, it's common. You made it, you what made Jordy it sound just like... Said, you, well, Jordy just said it's called a false flag attack. People have been doing it. Uh, Hitler did it. People do it all the time. You you basically attack yourself or you know you're going to be attacked. They said that it might have happened during Pearl Harbor, that we had prior knowledge, but they let us attack us so we could go they also, into they all They also said that they also said it about uh, the, what started off World War One. So you start to you start to come to well, the conclusion they say that, that it's just the common conspiracy theory. But, but, you know? but it uh, kind the of Lusitania, made... The Lusitania, the Lusitania was the same thing. So every single time there's prior knowledge, to start a war, so you start to think maybe it's just kind of an urban myth. But, the, but, but why do they know? But why, guys, why do we have tides, war? Though. Let me tell you this: Why right. do we have war, guys? Because it benefits money, money. resources. Money. Exactly. Money. That's oh, the I agree only with that. reason. That, I agree with that. But That's you the be only a special reason kind of we have war. Crazy to kill no. your own people. Yeah, you but gotta, even you even a special kind of even crazy the Ukrainians and Russians could come to an agreement if they weren't shooting each other. If we had to sit down and come to an agreement, we'd come to an agreement. We're human there. But but instead agree with you there. we have we have yeah. bankers we have military industrial com- Boeing seven four seven thirty seven Max the doors are falling off of it like that's the same company that makes all this military stuff like they're idiots it's the, the movie Idiocracy we're being run by idiots that are just still you know scamming us but, but these are the top companies prove- Boeing Raytheon they're bigger than us they're too big to fail. But didn't they prove that the uh, actual airplane companies engineers adjusted the bolts themselves like they were trying to change the. Uh- the design, what they didn't use both. Yeah, but that design. same that same plane they had. They, you remember they had to take, they had to ground a bunch of Southwest Airlines flights. Their, their headquarters is here in Dallas, right where I live. They had to like, uh, you know, it was like twenty nine planes. They had to ground because the software of the seven thirty seven Max was making planes just, uh, it was just making them fall out of the sky, like literally nosedive. So they've had all kinds of issues with the seven thirty seven Max. And, and like I fly all the time, and now I'm like almost scared to fly with all this weird stuff, DEI hiring, and all this weird stuff. Well, I agree like, there. It's it's very, and and I'm, not, I'm not, I don't care if my pilot's black. I don't care about that. But there is just some weird stuff. Like, I don't think being transgender should be a qualification for my pilot. You know what I mean? I just want a pilot. <laughs> why, do you think the right, why do you think the right makes such a big deal about transgender? It's like such a small percentage of the public. I, and, you know, I talk about this, Jordy. You know why? You know, and, and I, you've seen this content that's the uh, pet pe- poachers. And one of my good friends does this, Alex Rosen. And there is a lot of anti-gay rhetoric on the right, like, for sure. I would actually say a lot of conservative voices that are in power actually want to lift gay voices. Like I would say the like I don't think Donald Trump's homophobic one bit. He has gay people who work for him, you know, this no, and that. I don't believe that at all. Yeah, but I'm but I'm saying there are a lot of right wing people that are anti gay, but Jordy, I think what it comes down to is a lot of people were sexually abused or know somebody that was sexually abused. And sometimes that can be of where, you know, something happened to them. That's where a lot of anti gay rhetoric I think starts. I think that Boogie, really is a lot of people. Step in yeah. here? Yeah. Well, Boogie can speak it because I know Boogie, uh, you know, yeah, I'm just saying Boogie trauma. loves to talk, tell stories about this. Come on, Boogie, give it up. Yeah, I think that's a lot of it. And I do think when we're talking about conservatives, um, the, you know, by definition, the term conservative is, is just maintaining the status quo. Right. So the status quo for gay people wasn't great for a really long time. And so the conservative party can sometimes be traditionalists and they want to stick to tradition and traditionally there wasn't a lot of openly gay people. I think there was a lot of, growing up. There was definitely some closeted gay people in my school, but absolutely. I do think, um, if you get to growing up by a gay dude, uh, that's going to make you hate gay dudes. Like that's pretty mm-hmm. obvious.
Yeah. Can I make I another mean, argument? How about this? How about this? this I'm not this saying all people crazy. that hate gay people, but also the Christianity part too. A lot of people are like, well, this is I, bad. I, I, I actually agree with you, Alex. Yeah. I actually agree. But I think there's another thing. I mean, Chappelle talked about this in one of his comedy specials. Like, you know, the, the, the gays are doing pretty good in, 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 in kind of the uh, victim Olympics. They're, yeah. they're, they're killing it. They're getting all the gold medals. And you're seeing stuff like, you know, girls... Boys and girls basketball. That's a fact. That's happening. That's not like an illusion. It's not a it's not a false flag. It's 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 actually happening. And the obsession with telling prepubescent kids about stuff that they really shouldn't be hearing until they're at least 13, 14 years old, uh, when you're taking sex ed, like north most kids. I think I, I think you know, like, you know, I should have to, I should talk to your eight year old. No, no, you should stay away from my eight year old. Well, I think you know, that, to, to answer Jordy. Well, to answer Jordy, to answer your question, I think that's what it really comes down to. The transgender issue is that you know there was a time where like you wouldn't ever. There's, I think there was one sexual re gender reassignment clinic in America, and that was because there was a very small amount of babies were born intersex, so like in vagina where they'd have to give it gender yeah. reassignment surgery, like in the rare instance. Sure. But now there's a gender reassignment clinic in every state, multiple in every major city. So it's weird. Like there is some sort of agenda now where more kids are becoming trans. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not anti-gay at all. If you want to be gay, that's, you know, that's cool. But yeah, I think cool. there's, I think there's gay kids that are getting confused and they feel like they're in the wrong body. Cause I've talked to people that have detransitioned. I've had them on my show and they said, Oh, well they went to a doctor and they were in California. The doctor recommended this. And then they have them on record at uh, the, the Boston children's hospital saying we like trans kids because we have a lifelong patient because we have to give them hormones and potentially oh, God. $175,000 oh. gender reassignment that, surgery. That, so that's medical, you know, that's medical in, in general though. That's yeah, what I'm saying. That they, they, they don't want to fix diabetes. That's like, Jordan, they you're going it. to Mexico is the smartest thing ever. I love that you went there. I'm about to go to Mexico and get dental work, I think. No, I'm just saying. Well, our, our the reason I went to Mexico <laughs> was a logistics problem because people want to say, like, oh, I was trying to steal money. I'm like, no, I need aftercare. Like, I can spend yeah, no. all this money on you American health care. You can steal $1. But don't you hate that people donate to a streamer and that then they get to pocket watch you and tell you how they spend every single dollar? Oh, my gosh. That's, uh, that's I'll probably tell one you of this. the most my, annoying my wife just had uh, me. <laughs> my wife just had the same surgery I had in the States. And I would go so far and say my experience was better than hers. Like she is a weight loss doctor at a hospital that doesn't recognize DKA, which is diabetic keto ketoacidosis, which is like when your blood sugar gets too high, doesn't recognize it. And he's a weight loss doctor. We go to his clinic. He has nothing in his clinic that can actually test blood sugar. How are you be a weight loss doctor without any kind of tools to test blood sugar here? Like, Oh my God, that's horrific. That ketoacidosis is really bad, so it's like where your body has to use what, like sugar, to run off. It won't run off your own. Uh, sort I don't, of I don't know the it? technical. Like I'm not a doctor yeah, by any but, well, that's, but it, it kills that's you. That's bad. It kills you. It goes yeah, to a coma you. and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And, and it's speaking like, of American healthcare, can I say the the biggest failing about this guy lighting himself on fire is that he's alive and in a hospital right now. Is he alive? You know who's paying? He died. No, 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 he, no, he died, died this morning. Oh, okay, all right. Because I saw the and I saw that they ushered his to the hospital and all i can think is the american taxpayer is gonna to have to pay for this month they spent a hundred thousand yeah. dollars trying to save them though because they want to interview i mean i'm sure they spent a lot of money but well, it's money that's already I mean, spent when so he, yeah, yeah. he yeah. on like the military's doctor, done though yeah. like like he, yeah he, so who cares yeah no, he, he's 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 entitled to well who do you think pays care, for the yeah. military you and me yeah, I understand. Well, yeah, I, I mean, understand the military that. would be an ex the military would be an example of socialized medicine, and I guess you guys want that. Good luck. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, no, but, and, but I just I can speak on that, Tommy, because like my brother is like a Purple Heart guy, and he has like PTSD. And I know your brother's and bad. At and sure. but like the reason like the the military sucks so much ass is like you you have to go to a certain place they tell you to go to. Like if you can sure, take yeah. the your VA benefits and go to like your primary care physician or like a doctor in your hometown and sounds then, like Europe. I yeah, don't, I, yeah, I don't know anything Sounds like about Europe. Europe, but like I'm just yeah. saying, if you could just yeah, take well, that and go yeah, other, it yeah. would, it, you wouldn't have like a waiting list that's three months long. What do you mean? You're Mr. Well, London, like dude. Europe. You know all about Europe, Jordy. What do you mean, dude? You're I, a champion. I hate it every time I went to Europe. Europe. He especially he loves the food. Travelers. He loved the food in England, oh, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why I, I have to make fun of you, Wings. I have to make fun of you. I saw one of your tweets when you were in London. You just landed, and you tweeted a Pepsi, and I think you put like $11. And I, I wanted to put a hate comment. I go, you just flew all the way there. You're about to fight, and you still want to complain about the price of Pepsi, Jordan. I, Jordy, I just <laughs> <laughs> you still find a way to shut on this great trip, mad at the Pepsi prices. Dude. Do you know the tweet I'm talking about, Jordy? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, Pounds, basically, too. basically, um, it was I went to I went to a subway with my wife to find something to eat, and they had Pepsi. There. I'm like, subway. I have to try Pepsi in another country. <laughs> Across the ocean, he goes to subway. <laughs> I don't blame him. Everything's so expensive, though. I really don't. Dude, it sucks. Uh, like, uh, we, we we ate we ate at like Greg's and Nando's and like other places as well, but like all of it sucked. Like no matter what you paid, you get London food. Sucks. Maybe, maybe it's good. Yeah, I, I, I've almost I I've been on the side of pond. It's going on. Oh God, it's pushing twenty years. So maybe I just know how to work the system. Germany has bit. good food though. They have schnitzel and all that fried stuff. Uh, and uh, right. yeah. I get that. I get that. I get that homemade thing too. I, so I don't, I don't I know if this is a that, European yeah. thing or a London thing, but London people are f- slobs. Like I come from the south. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like, I come whoa, from the whoa, whoa. south, and like if you would take like a bucket of chicken and throw it in the street, somebody would have issues with it. Like you just like like yeah, like they I literally. Know, you know I was I in the Wembley mean. area of London, mean, yeah. and like people in the middle of the night. If you went out at night, you'd have buckets of chicken um, laying there, trash. He's, he's and right. Like, like it's just yeah. all over the street. There is a chicken joint in London every three feet. It's like not even exaggeration. I've never seen more and chicken it, the, places. The part is, there's like a trash bag on every light pole on the street. Yeah, and they know. can't walk five feet to put their chicken bucket in the. Lightful. If you did that here in Germany, somebody's going to say something. You, know? you were just yeah. mad because they wasted that chicken. You'd be honest, because I hate it. Listen, I'm not 400 pounds. I've been close to 300. I hate seeing food wasted. I'm sure you did too. You probably saw that food. You're like, what a waste. <laughs> you probably wanted to eat. You probably ate yeah, it. Yeah, no, you see that delicious chicken. Fried chicken, right? chicken in London has to be a, like almost like eating like you know Mary Rose. KFC is like Connors. a delicatessen there. They love it. Yeah. Yeah. KFC <laughs> sucks <laughs> in. <laughs> They love I actually it had fried chicken. I actually had fried chicken in London, and it was bland as f**k. Really? It yeah, I had it at a little bakery that was near the stadium, and like yeah. everything was just so bland. The sauce they put on it was good, but it you was shut like, up, my friend. I make it, good chicken, my friends. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I will say, hey, also the service. Holy sh**, dude! Like I literally, somebody came and took my order, brought a glass of water, and left for twenty five well, minutes. To- Fast food joints, man. Go to it a wasn't a fast like a food joint. No, it was a bakery. I was in a bakery with seating and everything. Okay, first of all, you guys, I want, I do want to congratulate both of y'all for boxing, getting in the ring. You know, I did, did that help yeah, you guys with the trolls you guys do? Because I had a fight for Misfits, and listen, you guys were a part of Misfits. They were gassing me up all week, and I got turkey dogs. I had a Muslim opponent, and I didn't want to be rude. I told his corner guy I was going to do this. The day before the weigh-ins at the press conference, I filled up the hot dog, you know, the ice bucket, uh, the the hotel ice bucket. I filled it up with turkey dogs, specifically not pork. And at, at the press conference, I threw a bucket of turkey dogs on my opponent. <laughs> I saw that. It yes. was funny. And- well, I brought you a little gift because uh, I know you love hot dogs. So. Because he was Muslim, they because it was like a British owned company that had a lot of Muslim employees and stuff, they canceled my fight, guys, and fired me. <laughs> Three days oh, into the fight. Ten thousand dollars down the drain. Alex, and the money I spent touched, training. You, you should have you should have uh, touched base with me. I would have told you. Like it, it worked, it's a little different over here. You know, and Keem was department. sick about it. Keem was sick. I, I was bet. sick. I didn't think it was that big a deal. And I even told his corner guy, I was like, these are turkey dogs. I saved the packaging. But Oh was, really? Yes, and it was not it's, it's perception. That guy chased you. That guy. That guy chased you around the um. Mo the press Dean, conference too, which yes, is real, and I'm so yeah, he was mad. So funny. And then I ended up fighting <laughs> in the same carnival of combat with uh, Luis Gomez. I fought his producer, which I, I won my fight. But people don't realize how hard it is. Now looking back, I'm sure both of you guys are happy that you did it. What would you have done different, Boogie? Would you have trained more, or what would you have done different, Boogie? I, I trained it all. Back? Obviously, I would have definitely trained it all. But like, I, yeah. it, my road, <laughs> my road to that thing was getting back into physical therapy briefly and trying to get like fit enough to make it there. Dude, you, got the the you got the ring. You got the ring. I was just trying to like survive the trip to England. Uh, that Jordy only yeah. hit the bag but, with the cameras. Dude, on. but you got no, in no, the no, ring no, with no, wings. I was having I was having nightmares. I was I had convinced myself Boogie had this like 
trainer and he was he was he was like <laughs> sandbagging on camera. He didn't look as bad as he actually was. So like oh, I would no. like, like literally if you go back and look, I have like tweets where I'm like showing where like I'm getting like chafe marks on my arm, yeah, like yeah, punching yeah. the back. He was doing the work, like man. Yeah. Like I was I was putting in like probably two and a half hours a day and like carrying water, punching the bag. Because I wanted to get myself to nine minutes. If I could hit the bag as hard as I can for nine minutes, because I only had to do nine minutes. All right, yeah. I wouldn't have to worry about being exhausted. But like boxing wears you to f out. Oh, it does. Yes. Dude, I, was, yeah. I was exhausted getting to the ring. Yeah, you I had bitch to sat, sat down. down. I, mean, there. Yeah, I, was, I Everybody's to. like, why were you smiling when you were rapping out to the ring? Because I've seen Boogie's bitch sitting in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boogie, but that to be fair, awesome. Boogie, you're, I, I mean, it's a lot different when you're from Conway and you're like a professional Magic the Gathering player. Like, let's be real, you're not built to fight. You know, Jordy's built for a little <laughs> more yeah, to fight. I mean, let's be real. But but you went in, you got the ring and you went toe to toe. I So I, kudos, my hat goes off to you. And I mean that, I'm not even kissing. It takes a lot of I mean I, that too. I mean, while, while, you're kissing, while you're kissing my let me go a step further. I stepped out of the ring knowing I was going to do nothing but take a beating, and I still walked in. And it was <laughs> yeah. a good time. And yeah, yeah, good. I actually tell these guys, like, that's, the one, that's the one thing I won't really make fun of them on, because I think it takes a certain amount of guts to get in a ring. So I, I do respect them for that. Yeah, you're you know? trolls. You just shut up. And you took those blows. You did well. I mean, you really didn't get crushed that bad. I mean, you, you just didn't land any punches, oh, but oh, I mean, you did. No, I will say, I will say up, that up. first that, number one, let me say, Jordan, sorry to cut you off. But I will say that that first hit rocked my world. I was really <laughs> yeah. surprised by how big of a hit. Like a mild, mild like concussion from that first hit. But then for the rest of them out, they weren't as bad. And I think he gassed himself on that one. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I, I think you just got numb to it. But we had 16-ounce gloves on. That's why Boogie didn't get hurt worse. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no shit. yeah. I will. I, so you blocked, he did block a lot of your punches. I mean, Jordy, you threw all the punches. I mean, you won the fight handedly, obviously. But I'm saying he did block a lot of punches. Like you, hand, you, you stood up there. I thought you looked. You know, it could have been way worse. You could have got totally. I mean, I, I, I mean, I kind of always, I kind of felt like walking into it. I was prepared for it because I, if I, if I can get hit by my mother with her bare knuckles when I'm eight years old, <laughs> she's 300 pounds. If I can stand up there in that, then I can probably take whatever Jordy's got coming through a 16 yeah, ounce glove. But right? like your mother yeah. probably smoked menthol cools. And she didn't have any. <laughs> she did. Yes, actually did. <laughs> that was her brand. How did you know that's her brand? Uh, that's what trailer know. trash. How the hell did you know that? was in the documentary. <laughs> how did you know that, dude? Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, let, let, you know, let, let me let you have some more life secrets, Boogie. If you have a tow truck and you drive through the trailer park, your chances of getting your dicks up go up 300%. No. <laughs> why? Because that, people don't want their car to get repossessed? Is that why, Jordy? Is that the Yeah, that's that why. Oh, my God. Dude, you know all the white trash jokes. How do you even know that joke, dude? That is like dude. a trailer park BJ joke. Jordy, you are insane. Oh, my God. Jordy, but this is one thing people do make fun of you. You own your house. House. Like I know we're all struggling trying to make it. I'm on the internet trying to, you know, struggle to make it. But dude, they literally react to your content. They wouldn't even survive without you. So it's crazy how like it's all about perspective. You know, like as bad as you and I think it's like you're depressed. I know Boogie has depression issues. I have it too. But as bad as we have it sometimes, we're doing a million times better than a lot of people. A lot of people would trade, you know, places with us like that. And it's hard to have. I forget to have that gratitude. And you guys probably should have it more too. I think know? a lot of people, yeah. a lot yeah. of people don't have good attitude. Oh, my, my, my meter went off. You have depression issues, Alex. Well, not Seriously. that, but I'm saying everybody has anxiety no. and stress. I, I just say, I, I kind of, I think there is like the kind of depression where like, you know, you have some chemical imbalance in your head, but I think everybody has self-doubt. Everybody has, they look oh, in the yeah, mirror yeah, yeah, of course, and yeah. has some sort of like, God, I look bad or this. Like, in, unless you're just crazy and like, you really think you're perfect, which that's a different sort of mental illness in itself. So yeah, I don't know. I think everybody has that, uh, some people have it worse than other, but I would say almost every single human being has a tid, a tint of like depression and anxiety. Yeah, but I right? wouldn't call I that mean, depression. I call that like butterflies. I wouldn't call that anxiety. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Tommy. When you're cri I'm, you're crippled. No, I don't. I don't really. I don't. Like, I don't think I'm perfect by any stretch. But I mean, I don't. Well, really this have is it, this is why I think I have depression. Like I lost my mom. You know, now it's almost two years yeah, ago. That sucks. But I'm saying, I'm saying, I can sit there and cry. I can think about my mom and start crying. It's like that's depression. I mean, I don't know what else to call is it. Is it? That's not it? depression. Think so. that's that's grieving. Grieving. I don't think that's, that's depression. That's that's grieving. That's yeah, grieving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, but your mom died. You're a young guy. I mean, like that well, sucks, dude. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't think that's. 
Well, like, if I don't uh, have super uh, duper depression, I do have anxiety, just like everybody else. I get anxious. Oh uh, well, I mean, I think that's butterflies. I mean, These I'll, guys, I'll, can, I'll you can be crippled by it, like crippled. You can't get out of bed. You know, but that's, you know what would help? Think. You know what would help? And, and this is for Boogie and Jordy, and you guys have had a lot of success. I would never ever give you advice, but you know, the number one thing that would help us out all, and, and for at least for me, is when I do take care of myself and I start dieting and exercising. Like that is what helps me mentally. More than anything, you know what I mean? But but it's hard sure. because I'm addicted to food. I'm sure you guys are too. I'm fully blown <laughs> addicted to food. I have eating I issues food. where I love to binge eat. I, I mean, it's my favorite thing. I like food more than I like anything else, more than drugs. More I than just alcohol. had a... What state, what state you live in? I live in Texas. I live in Dallas. So I know you, you guys are going through, but I'm just... Yeah, well, yeah, but I don't like Zaxby's that skin, much. I'm the skinniest guy. I'm the skinniest out of all of them. And I've, I've actually had... Uh, I have a heart stint. No, you have a sense. See, my true, dad yeah. had heart issues. See, I don't. I'm the plant based pimp. Listen to this. I don't eat any meat. I, I, uh, I, uh, I eat, I'm a vegetarian. But because of that, I'm a fat really? vegetarian. All I do is eat pizza. I eat cheese eat pizza. pizza and yeah. And, oh and my god. Yeah, but every like, night. you don't. You, taste re- you realize you like you realize better. dough is actually an animal, right? Well, how do you figure? Because well, how do you, how? It's oh, living. Know. It's alive. Dough's alive. Well, yeah, I don't, dough. Yeah, like I don't even care that much. It's a bacteria. I have cats and dogs. Off. Well, I'm fucking with you. No, for real though, he's right though. There is no vegetarian meal that tastes better than a steak. There, you can do whatever you want to to have uh-huh. vegetables all day, bread. I don't uh-huh. give a shit. It's never going to taste better than that. That, that is true. But right. this is why I stopped yeah. eating meat too. It's like, first of all, I love Amber Lynn Reed. You ever watch her content? She's six hundred. I've been pounds. trying to get her on the yeah. podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, she we is, should yeah. get Amber. You guys would go crazy. But I, but I loved it because oh, I, I used to love to have Amber on. She yeah. wants money. She She's wants great, money. but. I, yeah, of course, but she used to always talk about how she was a vegetarian, and so I used to kind of look into it. So I started watching those documentaries, and uh, for me, I, you guys are going to think this is crazy. Once again, let me just get on my soapbox and talk about conspiracies. I do think Hillary Clinton probably drinks the blood of children. I, I know that's weird, and so they, they, they think it's like, called. No, listen, follow me. It's called adrenochrome, and Jordy Jordy's going to make fun of me after I say this. But they say that uh, they like to drink the blood of children because it has anti-aging benefits and that you're drinking the children's adrenalized blood. Well, when cows are at the slaughterhouse and they're watching their other cow friends get murdered, when they put the spike in their head, the air gun, and it you know, sticks a rod in their brain, they die instantly, they get adrenaline before that. So when you eat a hamburger from McDonald's, sometimes that quarter pounder that you're eating from McDonald's, from the factory processing, could have meat fragments from over one thousand dead cows that's true i know that sounds oh, crazy yeah but that sounds amazing because, yeah it yes sounds, because it's delicious mixed, i'm gonna eat a burger of a thousand cows alex yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 boogie. <laughs> why have one boogie why have one when you can have one thousand that's what i'm saying <laughs> but boogie, trust me when you eat the buffalo chicken tender at arby's which is so delicious the buffalo slider i know it's so good but that processed chicken could have the 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 meat from 200 chickens a literally because it's all chickens. been <laughs> literally I the million chickens today <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just so gonna say that eat that you're eating the suffering uh, I feel like I'm I, eating I will the suffering say, I, 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 I will really say are, but you know I guess I gotta kind of apologize to both these guys because I did think you were a right wing comedian you're I am right wing comedian. Right-wing. I mean, I, I, mean, I think Are I'm you? a political comedian. I don't think so. Yeah, man. people say because I, I, I come in a soy boy. I know because I don't eat meat. I know, I know. Yeah, and yeah, I, I love cats. Well, no, no, no. It's, not, it's not just a meat thing. It's some of your views and stuff. You really yeah, I got my cat kind of right here. They oh all make fun of me too. Yeah. Oh this my is God. He looks like Rocco. Look, <laughs> look I think man. Alex is a good example of what a person should be, which he's not necessarily conservative. Hold he's up. not Keep necessarily liber- libertarian. Kelly, he's just here. a f- person. He's just himself. <laughs> and like yeah. he does whatever the f- is right for him. He's not yeah. drinking a f- Kool-Aid. Hey, he's making his own f- batch of Kool-Aid. Yeah, Thank I, you, I, I wanted to apologize to you guys because I kind of, I, I like, I, I'm the one that labeled him that. I, and I, I, well, I honestly thought that was the That's the beauty of this show is getting to know somebody and now yeah. I'm gonna say one more thing. oh no let me make this point my wikipedia is written by all trolls i didn't even have it and literally the trolls go oh, in yeah, there yeah, and yeah. edit the wikipedia 100 percent written by you know my troll i have them too not as bad as y'all sorry alex i do want to say and i think this is very important you do know what state i'm from i've lived in arkansas since 1995 ish 96 and uh i have been born and bred in the clinton territory and i mm-hmm. i don't know anything about the San Jerome chrome sh- i think that's all bullshit but the <laughs> the Clintons are every bit as f- evil as you think. I know people whose lives were touched by them that are afraid to speak about it. I have met people who walked up to me at random, like, you're from Arkansas? Do you know what the Clintons did? Yes, we all f- know what the Clintons did. They killed f- 
kids, dude. I don't mean like they the did the kids right? on the tracks, but the, did, the, tracks, the, the right? Dixon Mafia sh real, dude. That's sh what, what, real. When the kids said it was true, it's got to be a hundred percent. No, <laughs> Boogie, you're a hundred percent right. They ran Arkansas, and then me and Arkansas, they supposedly had an airport where we were in Nicaragua. We were giving them guns, and they were giving us cocaine, and all that cocaine was supposedly flown into. Mina, Arkansas, there's a movie about it starring Tom Cruise called American Made with Barry Seal. And so they would fly it into Arkansas and conveniently uh, Bill Clinton was the governor at the time or, you know, and Hillary Clinton is running there, this huge law firm. And all of that money was funding all the black ops for the CIA. Like this is all out on record. You can look up the Iran Contra. So the Clintons have been involved in murder for hire. That's why these kids on the track, they talk about these kids that were murdered. They supposedly saw one of these drug drops. I think he and was the they, attorney general then when the kids were on the track. I'm whatever sure it was, I'm just saying general, he yeah. was maybe he wasn't the governor of the time but but bill clinton's own brother roger clinton went to jail for co and the only reason that he didn't pardon him is because he didn't want to make it look like he was you know nepotism or something but he obviously got a light sentence but if your own brother's snorting and supposedly these girls that sort of with roger clinton saw bill clinton snort with his brother and then hillary clinton is obviously doing something weird i mean i don't maybe she's not drinking the blood of children maybe that, that's an exag exaggeration maybe <laughs> yeah, i don't know maybe maybe, maybe, but, maybe so but, maybe well, but I know she's killed sure. people. I, yeah, it's not working, but I know she's killed people and been involved in people's deaths. Like, what is that, Vince Gill guy or Vince whoever? I forget. Norm MacDonald has a whole bit about it where he went on The View and talked about how a guy killed himself by shooting himself with the gun's missing somehow. So, I mean, Hillary Clinton <laughs> is a succubus, probably the spawn of I, I got to ask yeah. with this line of conversation, what's your thoughts on the Ep Epstein suicide? Oh, you know he didn't. So, but dude, that that's the whole that's like the whole Ken Caboodle because whether you're all these people are like, oh, I'm Democrat. How can you excuse the fact that Bill Clinton was on the Lolita Express 26 times and everybody's like, oh, Trump went there one time. First of all, maybe he did fly on the plane once, but I don't think he was at the Lolita Island or excuse me. Uh, was Saint it actually James called Island. the Lolita Express? That's what they called no, the plane. That's what, the that's what they call it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but supposedly in their circles, they would call it the Lolita Express. And this is how. Really? Oh, really? Oh, God. This is That's how crazy. repugnant Jeffrey Epstein was. Jean Luc Brunel, a guy who died under the same circumstances that Jeffrey Epstein did in prison by. He said that uh, Jeffrey Epstein's biggest conquest and this is disgusting this is what this is what they say is that jeffrey epstein used to brag in his circles about how jean-luc brunel this guy he was a model scout in france and that's where he would find these underage girls and you know they would go to the bahamas yeah. or st james island but that jeffrey epstein used to brag about sleeping with three 11 year old triplet girls that was his they, they were like what was your favorite thing yes and jean-luc brunel gave him that for his birthday flew girls in this was supposedly talked about this is, I'm not making this up. This is totally, you know, whatever. That This is what they say that, that Jeffrey Epstein would talk about. I don't about know. I'm not, about. I'm not 100% convinced he, uh, that he, uh, I, I think it's pot, like, I wouldn't even say likely, but um, the they fact turn that off the impossible. cameras, Tommy. Why would the cameras yeah, yeah, just yeah, get yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah. a little more? I'm a little bit, the, what I don't accept is uh, my brother works in, um, uh, my brother at the time, uh, he worked in the prison system and uh, he kind of showed me a way to hang himself off your bed where if you roll off it you can't like unroll on it there's a way to tie it i don't know if jeffrey effort did that or not all i'm saying is i think there's i don't think it's impossible to himself, but i'm leaning towards he didn't <laughs> you know yeah right I, yeah. I think it's well i don't think it's impossible to himself in prison and not be somebody not know about it i mean like i i think that it could actually happen and has a million times over my you know uh, uh there was this uh Cana a russian canadian hockey coach it was kids and he figured out a way to do it in prison so I'm, Jerry Sandusky I'm did it I'm for somewhere. years. The Penn State coach. Yeah. No, I mean, there is. That's yeah, the yeah. thing is there are elite people that are doing weird stuff in power and they do it to get like you guys. You watch James Bond and every James Bond movie. They have like, you know, a lot of China. They always have like a sexual honeypot woman. And a lot of that's based in like true, you know, whatever CIA spy techniques where you use people in vulnerable situations with well, like Ian, women. Ian Fleming, yeah, Ian, Fleming, yeah. Fleming, Ian, Fleming yeah. Ian Fleming was a spy. So I'm that's sure what I'm saying. That's a real thing. Legit, if you're a yeah. spy, you like yeah. have some sex. Because listen, imagine if you, and, and I'm not even, and really, Boogie, you should check me on this, but your girlfriend might be an FBI agent. How are you getting with a hot girl like that? That's the I, only that way. Is, <laughs> I mean, so, you, know, you have to check yourself. If some hot girl is looking at you and you're like, why is this girl? She's probably an FBI agent or a spy. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, honestly, whenever, if, if somebody's nice to me in a bar, I'm thinking, oh, they must know me from online. They're going to yeah, kill I, my, thought process, my thought process might be she'll kill me in my sleep, but what a way to go. Let's just go. Yeah, Let's go. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're definitely you're definitely doing well, and all the guys are hating on you and stuff. 
Okay, you got a, a, a hot girlfriend. You're living the life she likes you. I mean, you, you, you know, you can't let the haters bring you down. Um, no, at the end of the day, this show, this show has taught me, if anything, number one, we've got so many wings as like dudes in here and they've just been such shameful jokes of a person. I can't believe I ever took their criticism, uh, even remotely personally. And secondly, this show has, uh, like Tommy's put me through pure hell. Keem has put me through pure hell. Like they have grilled and grilled me and grilled me. But in the process, I've come back tougher each time. It's like wings beating. The shit out of me. I mean, I don't know. I can think of beating. So at, at the end of the day, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm just living my best life, trying to figure out. You know what's going on? I'll lose translate. They're good. They're oh, they're both doing pretty good right now. That's yes. That's, that's the we're making it. Our bills are getting yeah. paid. We're, we're making I look forward. I look out. forward to my next <laughs> mental collapse. I think we all. Do. <laughs> I know. Well, I look forward to your <laughs> mental. <laughs> but I look forward to it too. But Boogie, this is the worst thing you ever did, though. And I'm I'm not even trying to be criticizing. But when you said that Ooh. I'm set for life, when you said that. You I know. Yeah, nice. oh I know. Oh my know that, god! Yeah, and do you, uh, no, you have no idea because I've told the story before on the podcast. Let me say yeah. one more time. I looked at my. I got divorced, and a quarter million dollars walked out the front door. Divorce is expensive. It was not a great experience, yeah. right? And I had that remaining quarter million left, so I took it and I invested it. And at one point, I checked my bank account, and my friends and I all went in on a point. I lost a load. One of my friends lost like one point five million on the coin, but we went under the. Bitcoin and I went to bed on the first night and I was up to like eight hundred thousand dollars on the coin and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna make the video. It's gonna be awesome. I'm Dog. so set. And then I woke up the next day and I was back below my investment no! point. Dog, I would be I hitting the sell button. So I wouldn't even went to sleep that night. I've been trying to sell that. I so know. <laughs> but my, our little group <laughs> chat both. was saying, "Oh, we're set for life. This is going to keep going up. This coin's the new technology. This coin's the next." No, it wasn't. Sh- it's still like you ever, you ever go back and look yeah, you ever go back and look where it's at now yeah all the time i'll look at it right now it's, it's lost, i'm I, sure it's well below what i put in it's 50 bucks well i lost seven thousand dollars on richard hart's uh coin i forget what it's called but i haven't invested in crypto why since. Do you I go, why do you guys do this shit? you guys are smart individuals how do you not know i did it two money years ago i did i well, did it one, I ain't smart this is over two years ago when I invested. This is like the height of it. And my buddy's like, you got to do it. You, you gotta use do the it. word like, invested. Right. I look at it as like putting your money in a slot machine, hoping you hit the f- jackpot. You That's don't know exactly what that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sh- that yeah. coin's going to do. You got no like optics, whatever. You can't even make an educated guess what's going to happen. If you if, 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 if what you're putting your money into is influenced by Elon Musk tweeting, you don't put your money in it. You're exactly right. No, no Jordy, no. I he learned it. I learned it. No, you're, I you lost seven thousand uh, trading. Bucks. You ever seen a movie tra- Trading Places? Yeah, uh, with Eddie Murphy yeah. and the two rich guys. The two rich guys explain them what they do uh, as far as investing and putting it here and putting it to make sure they don't lose any money. And he, Eddie Murphy turns because you sound like a bunch of bookies to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exactly what they. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 they're bookies with ties, you know? I mean, that, that's really one, what One thing I've learned it's funny. Life is f-ing crooked. And I just want to say this one point, Jordy. At the end of the movie, they all, they like, they like go and try to ruin that one guy's life, and then it was all for yeah. their bet, and it was $1. You, you remember that mm-hmm. at the end of that movie? Yeah. And then, it was $1, and, yeah. And that, yep. that is literally an, an analogy. Like, these evil people are so powerful, they don't even give a sh- about us like we're worth like one they'll ruin our life for one dollar sorry go ahead there's so much crooked in this world like i'm i'm into cars right so like in cars when you go to buy a car at auction if you see a car you want what you want to do is you want to open the hood and you want to pull like one of the coil packs off and you don't want anybody to see you do it and you close the hood so like when they start cranking it when they go to auction it it won't crank so now it's a no crank situation now you can get the car much cheaper and you know how to fix it all you gotta do is replug the coil Right, this is a tactic that happens. Jordy, I mean, I, I, I was a used car salesman before I, you know, started making content online, and I worked right, for yeah. No, the coil pack, they always take it off, or they'll clear the code on their car that they're trying to sell. So you, they know oh, every wow. scam, Jordy. You know the car business. You know all the scams. You know the I, coil I know pack everything scam. about okay, so, the car business. Okay. Yeah, so so this is what Jordy's saying is somebody they'll take the like the car will be running fine they'll take a coil pack off then it won't run and then like the it, it'll they'll do it right before the auction so the auction will be going all these cars are running and like oh that can't run that's in the in op lane and then it's like you know a quarter of the price uh, but sometimes the dealer knows that Jordy sometimes the dealer knows they fix the car if it gets too little you know what I mean you know. That's why, but there's all kinds of scams like that all the time. Hey, listen, guys, I got to interrupt because we only have Alex for an hour. Uh, I know you got to be somewhere pretty soon. From I, what I, I, understand I do. Okay, let me tell you the last thing. But I want to make, I want Jordy to finish his statement. I'm going to speak at the Plano, Plano City Council with my buddy Cassidy Campbell. He's a big time YouTuber. And uh, <clears throat> tonight what I was thinking about doing is, you know where they, 
where people call two Chinese restaurants at the same time. I was just going to go to the city council on the microphone and not say anything and just call two Chinese restaurants at the same time in the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> good, uh, good luck with that. In front of like the hundred people in the city council meeting. Yeah. Is that a good idea or bad idea? Yet? Boogie, you're I creative. Think it's great. Boogie, you know how to go dude, viral. I, is that funny or not? Dude, I think, get it's, I think it's really funny, yeah. I, I, I've almost been arrested. Freedom I'm suing. of speech, baby. Freedom I mean, yeah, of freedom speech. Of, it, well, I sued shit. New York City, Jordy. Yeah. I sued New York City, and they settled with me for fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand really? dollars for cutting me off. Yes, and I'm suing Dallas County for a similar thing. I, they don't want to pay me, but New York did. So uh, uh, I yeah, see people in like yeah, HOA meetings and like city council meetings all the time. Get like if somebody they say something that somebody in the city council meeting that like they'll call the cops on them and like have them locked yeah, up. I've seen that. So, yeah, but but Alex is actually. With them for I real, know. For real. I'm a First Amendment auditor, <laughs> so I know. So I'm doing that tonight, guys. It's an honor and privilege for letting me come on. Anything no, I can do to help you guys. No, it's a pleasure. You know Thank you for coming, man. I, I hope we can collab again. Jordy, guys, know that I am not a troll. I'm a friend of both you guys, and I want to, uh, you know, I, listen, I'm trying to navigate this really hard online world, too, so I know what it's like. So it's, uh, like I said, it's I was kind of hoping you were a troll. I was hoping no, you were I, I, I thought I when you missed me, I'm like, I'm like, this guy's going to be another Ethan Ralph. Let's go. No, I, I, <laughs> was just I was just no, no, I was going to be nice. Well, you probably beat less it. women than Ethan Ralph. You were. That's what I'm saying. You're a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, but I like you guys. I unironically. I, I mean, know you do. I, you know, I mean, Jordan, I you're it. funny, dude. What is it? What's the Jordy's what is funny. the Kid Rock song? Uh, why does how I does it start? If you, you just tell me the first. Lit up like the fourth. I'm a happy drunk. I'm wearing my hat. Nah, 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 nah. Wait, just sing it, please, please. Oh. What, you, <laughs> like, what is it? Let me look at the Happy more. drunk, come to pop a big mama, cause your daddy's drunk. I'm gonna drunk. Pump, pump it up like a good year. Like blimp. a good year, blimp. Blimp. Oh, dollar. That's the way I pimp. <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, God. Dude, wings. You're a legend. Let me get this, guys. Guys, let me. Thank you very much for being part of Low Cow Live. Thank you, all you subscribers, the guys that support us. And everything. Thank you, Alex Stein, so much for coming on here. Yeah, it's you're been a, a real blast, trip. Alex. Um, you guys from Boogie, rule, from you. me, from Keemstar, the whole Lulcow crew. Thank you very much, and good night.